Hello, my name is Lena Wimmer and I'm going to present two meta-analyses on cognitive effects and correlates of reading fiction. Although entertainment is widely identified as the immediate purpose of most fiction consumption, the longer-term psychological effects of this activity have been debated. In this regard, the field of social cognition has attracted the most scholarly activity in recent years. Special attention has been given to empathy and theory of mind. Several studies have suggested that reading short fictional texts enhances empathy and theory of mind, and that lifetime exposure to print fiction is positively correlated with both capacities. However, several issues remain unresolved. One is the robustness of findings in view of multiple failed replications and studies with null results. Another issue concerns the underlying textual mechanisms. Also, a capacity for high levels of empathy and theory of mind is generally considered desirable. It is worth bearing in mind, however, the possibility that fiction has adverse downstream effects in these areas. Similar disputes about whether the effects of fiction are positive or negative are familiar in two other domains. First, it is often suggested that written fiction is a source of knowledge in the sense that it enables readers of all ages to acquire correct information and desirable attitudes. By contrast, one of our studies found that the correlation between lifetime exposure to written fiction and general knowledge did not differ from the correlation between lifetime exposure to written non-fiction and general knowledge. What is more, a number of experiments have demonstrated that readers may easily acquire incorrect information from fiction even though they are aware that authors of fiction do not stick reliably to the truth. A similar dispute has emerged regarding fiction-based effects on biases and prejudices. A number of experiments have shown that reading fiction can be used effectively for bias and prejudice reduction. However, according to Buffon and Friend, although these experiments provide evidence that fictions can reduce harmful biases and prejudices, they fail to demonstrate that fictions do not also increase them. In sum, there are issues about the types of psychological outcomes that are influenced by reading fiction, about the desirability of these outcomes, and about the relations between fiction, non-fiction, narrativity and literariness as drivers of these effects. These and other continuing debates um, over the cognitive effects of reading fiction highlight the importance of the topic as well as the need for quantitative syntheses as provided by meta-analyses to resolve those debates. Two existing meta-analyses can be viewed as steps in this direction, with both focusing specifically on social cognitive outcomes. First, Dodel Federer and Tamir synthesized 51 effect sizes from 14 experimental studies in which participants were assigned short reading tasks. When compared to control conditions, reading fiction was found to have significant but small size benefits for social cognition with a HSG of 0.15. None of the variables under investigation was found to moderate the aggregate meta-analytic effect. Publication bias analyses did not suggest the presence of publication bias. Furthermore, Quinlan and colleagues investigated the evidential value of this body of research through a p-curve analysis. This involves 13 studies, eight of which were included in Dodal, Federer and Tamir's meta-analysis. In principle, the results confirmed the evidential value. However, as statistical power was low, the evidential value was not robust. Second, Mumper and Garrick synthesized effects from 30 studies in which the frequency of reading fiction was correlated with social cognitive skills. The volume of both fiction and non-fiction reading was found to be significantly positively correlated with empathy. Aggregate correlation coefficients were 0.07 and 0.05 respectively, and also with mentalizing, the aggregate correlation coefficients here were 0.21 and 0.09. Again, none of the variables under investigation emerged as a significant moderator. There was also no evidence for publication bias. Taken together, these two meta-analyses made important contributions to the literature as they showed that reading fiction is accompanied by small-sized benefits for social cognition. However, although the body of research covered was adequate given the infancy of the field at the time, it is likely to have limited power. 
This may explain why neither meta-analysis detected any significant moderator variables. Furthermore, both projects were confined to the area of social cognition, so do not permit conclusions about broader cognitive effects and correlates of reading fiction. This leads me to the present meta-analyses. We practiced open science as best we could. The QR code on the left should lead you to the pre-registration document and the QR code on the right to our materials and datasets. We carried out two meta-analyses that aim to significantly update and extend previous work. Meta-analysis 1 paralleled the review by the Delphi Darren Tamir and meta-analysis 2 the one by Mampa and Derek. The following research questions were investigated in both meta-analyses. First, how many studies have investigated cognitive effects or correlates of reading fiction? What is the synthesized effect size across these studies? And what moderator variables does this total effect size depend on? For meta-analysis 1, we considered research that meets the following inclusion criteria. It follows a true experimental design. It includes a control condition that does not involve reading fiction. And it includes at least one measure of cognition that goes beyond both literacy and state level indicators. Following the API dictionary of psychology, we define cognition as all forms of knowing and awareness, such as perceiving, conceiving, remembering, reasoning, judging, imagining, and problem solving. We also require the full text to be written in English. The only exclusion criterion was research that focuses on patient samples. In meta-analysis 2, we included research that fulfills the following criteria. It correlates at least one measure of lifetime exposure to print fiction or non-fiction with at least one measure of cognition. And cognition was just identified as in meta-analysis 1. And the remaining criteria were also like just as in meta-analysis 1. We performed a joint literature search for both meta-analyses. A database search using the search term FICT or non-FICT or non-FICT was carried out using the um, databases specified here. Uh, we also searched the publication lists of authors whose studies were included. In addition, we contacted these authors for unpublished studies and put out a call for unpublished studies via the mailing lists of the Society for Text and Discourse and the IDLE. Furthermore, we searched the reference lists of articles meeting inclusion criteria and also the reference lists of several reviews and meta-analyses which are detailed in our pre-registration document. We also considered research reports found through manual search. Turning to statistical analyses, for meta-analysis 1, effect sizes were calculated as bias-corrected hedges G representing the standardized mean difference between reading fiction and the comparison group such, such that positive effect sizes represent better performance in the fiction group. For meta-analysis 2, effect sizes were obtained by transforming the correlations from each contributing study into a Fisher set score, then averaging the set scores together and transforming the averaged set score back into an aggregate correlation for ease of interpretation. Positive correlations indicate a positive linear relationship between lifetime exposure to written fiction and cognitive benefits. We observed two types of dependencies in our data. First, that more than one dependent measure was assessed in the same sample. And second, that the same group of participants was compared more than once with another group of participants on the same dependent measure. Thus, we implemented multi-level random effects meta-analytic models that account for variance at the different levels. Since there were cross-level dependencies, we generated cluster-robust estimates from the multi-level meta-analytic models. Let's have a look at the results now. Our database search detected 32,983 entries. During the initial selection process, duplicates were removed. After titles and abstracts were screened, full texts of the remaining records were sought and checked for eligibility. This um, figure provides detailed information on the number of entries excluded at each step. 
Finally, 39 records were found eligible for one or both meta-analyses, and a further 88 reports were detected through means other than database search here shown on the right-hand side. In sum, 127 reports were included in the present meta-analyses, 11 of which were included in both meta-analyses. Meta-analysis 1 included 69 and meta-analysis 2 included 111 statistically independent studies. For meta-analysis 1, our primary research question addressed whether and to what extent reading fiction compared with control activities effectively enhances cognition. According to our meta-analysis of 368 effect sizes from 69 studies, compared with control activities, reading fiction led to greater cognitive benefits. This can be seen from the funnel plot here, in which each dot represents one of the 368 effect sizes. Effect sizes on the x-axis are plotted against their standard error on the y-axis. The dotted vertical line represents the mean meta-analytical effect, and we can see that it is greater than zero. Within the funnel shape, the white area reflects the 90% confidence interval of the mean effect. The dark gray area reflects the 95% confidence interval of the mean effect. And the light gray area reflects the 99% confidence interval of the mean effect. The aggregate effect was small in size, but statistically significant, with a hedges G of 0.14. The presence of heterogeneity was indicated by a significant Q statistic and I squared statistics. In sum, these findings suggest that reading fiction leads to small sized cognitive benefits and that the effect sizes differ systematically between studies due to factors that vary between studies. Robustness of the effect was confirmed using sensitivity analyses that are considered st standardized procedural values and um, also leave one out procedures. For meta-analysis 2, the primary research question concerned whether and to what extent lifetime exposure to written fiction is associated with cognitive benefits. Our meta-analysis of 551 effect sizes from 111 studies revealed that there is a significant small-sized positive association between lifetime exposure to written fiction and cognitive abilities, as can be seen from the funnel plot here. With a correlation coefficient of 0.17, the aggregate effect was small in size, but statistically significant. Presence of heterogeneity was indicated by a significant Q statistic and also I-squared statistics. In sum, these findings suggest that lifetime exposure to written fiction is associated with small-sized cognitive benefits and that the effect size differs systematically between studies due to factors tests that vary between, between studies. Robustness of the effect was confirmed using sensitivity analyses, again drawing on standardized residual values and leave one out procedures. Let's move on to moderator analyses. Results for meta-analysis 1 are summarized in this table. Significant moderations are highlighted in green. According to the meta-regressions, the overall meta-analytic effect was moderated significantly by first type of comparison group. Specifically, effect sizes were greater when reading fiction was compared to either watching fiction or reading nothing than when reading fiction was compared to reading non-fiction. A second moderating effect emerged for outcome variable. Significant effects were observed only when the outcome was either empathy or theory of mind whereas effects did not differ significantly from zero for the remaining outcomes. Pairwise comparisons fail to reveal significant differences between effects of individual outcome variables. Thirdly, the overall meta-analytic effect was found to be moderated by publication status, that is, publica published study, studies demonstrated significantly greater effects than unpublished studies. Additionally, the effect for unpublished studies did not differ significantly from zero. Due to time restrictions, I can't explain all moderator variables under investigations, but I'm happy to take questions on this. This also applies to meta-analysis too. 
Moderation results for meta-analysis tool require two tables, and this is the first one. Um, I can only talk about some of the significant moderations. Particularly, publication status emerged as a moderator, as the meta-analytic effect was significantly greater for published than for unpublished studies. Regarding the outcome variables, all effects except those associated with more recognition differed significantly from zero. Pairwise contrasts showed that effects linked with verbal abilities were significantly greater than those associated with all other outcome variables. In addition, general cognitive abilities were related to significantly smaller effects than verbal abilities, but to greater effects than all other outcomes. And the remaining contrasts were not significant. Beyond this, fictionality acted as a significant moderator variable since lifetime exposure to written fiction was linked with greater effects than lifetime exposure to written non-fiction. Finally, percentage of female participants exerted a significant moderating impact, meaning that the higher the percentage of female participants within a study sample, the smaller the overall meta-analytic effect. To sum up, we can say that both meta-analyses converged regarding several aspects. Both meta-analyses yielded small-sized aggregate effects, suggesting that short fiction reading assignments cause small cognitive benefits and that lifetime exposure to written fiction is related to small cognitive enhancements. Overall effects of both meta-analyses were robust, so were neither the result of individual outliers nor driven by risk of bias. Given that adverse outcomes were rarely investigated, the two meta-analyses provide only minimal evidence for the assumption that reading fiction is not linked with cognitive detriments. Results of both meta-analyses also converged regarding the role of reading fiction for the aggregate effects. Both projects showed that reading in general makes a significant contribution, with fiction reading having a particular impact. However, publication bias could not be fully ruled out, ruled out as unpublished work was linked with smaller effect than published work. Patterns of results for the two meta-analyses differed in two major ways. Firstly, the percentage of female participants was a significant moderator of correlational but not of experimental effects. It is possible that males have a greater potential for fiction-related cognitive benefits since they have a lower preference for written fiction than females. Um, in any case, the fact that participant characteristic, characteristics that do not moderate effects in meta-analysis 1 could mean that short fiction reading assignments can overrule the influence of reader attributes. Secondly, the meta-analyses yielded diverging results regarding the cognitive outcomes associated with reading fiction. Experimental effects of reading fiction were significant for indicators of social cognition only, but correlations with, li with lifetime fiction exposure were significant for all cognitive outcomes except for moral cognition. In fact, effects of empathy and mentalizing or theory of mind were surpassed by those of verbal and general cognitive abilities and were not stronger than effects of remaining outcomes. If we assume a causal impact of reading fiction across both meta-analyses, this could indicate that short fiction reading assignments merely prime social cognitive skills and that these priming effects consolidate over time without growing in size. The other cognitive outcomes that correlated with lifetime exposure to print fiction may not be immediately primed during reading, at least not to a measurable extent, but may still accumulate over time. Alternatively, the pattern could be interpreted as evidence against a causal impact of reading fiction. If effects for verbal and general cognitive abilities show up only in correlational studies, which cannot confirm causal relationships, but do not become evident in experiments, this may suggest that reading fiction does not cause sustainable cognitive benefits. In that case, the aggregate effect obtained in meta-analysis 1 may reflect a transient priming response, and the overall effect yielded in meta-analysis 2 may reflect differences in fiction reading preferences between people high in verbal and or general cognitive abilities. 
Finally, third variables such as education level could underlie the association between lifelong fiction reading and cognition. To conclude, we provide robust evidence for a small positive relationship between reading fiction and cognitive benefits. Whether this relation represents a sustainable change caused by reading fiction remains unknown. Further research needs to examine the underlying textual mechanisms and potential for adverse outcomes of reading fiction, implement stronger manipulations of reading volume, and consider publication of results independent of statistical significance, which could also be an invitation directed to publication outlets. Before I close, I would like to thank my collaborators, Heather Ferguson, Greg Curry, Stacey Friend, and Jörg Witwer. And now I thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to the Q&A session at the conference. Thank you.